September 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapter 27 and 28 from the Old Testament. At that time the Lord will punish with his destructive, great, and powerful sword, Leviathan the fast-moving serpent, Leviathan the squirming serpent. He will kill the sea monster. When that time comes, sing about a delightful vineyard. I, the Lord, protect it. I water it regularly. I guard it night and day so no one can harm it. I am not angry. I wish I could confront some thorns and briars. Then I would march against them for battle. I would set them all on fire, unless they became my subjects and made peace with me. Let them make peace with me. The time is coming when Jacob will take root. Israel will blossom and grow branches. The produce will fill the surface of the world. Has the Lord struck down Israel like he did their oppressors? Has Israel been killed like their enemies? When you summon her for divorce, you prosecute her. He drives her away with his strong wind in the day of the east wind. So in this way, Jacob's sin will be forgiven. And this is how they will show they are finished sinning. They will make all the stones of the altars like crushed limestone. And the Asherah poles and the incense altars will no longer stand. For the fortified city is left alone. It is a deserted settlement and abandoned like the desert. Calves graze there. They lie down there and eat its branches bare. When its branches get brittle, they break. Women come and use them for kindling, for these people lack understanding. Therefore, the one who made them has no compassion on them. The one who formed them has no mercy on them. At that time, the Lord will shake the tree from the Euphrates River to the streams of Egypt. Then you will be gathered up one by one, O Israelites. At that time, a large trumpet will be blown, and the ones lost in the land of Assyria will come, as well as the refugees in the land of Egypt. They will worship the Lord on the holy mountain in Jerusalem. The splendid crown of Ephraim's drunkards is doomed, the withering flower its beautiful splendor, situated at the head of a rich valley, the crown of those overcome with wine. Look, the sovereign master sends a strong, powerful one, with the force of a hailstorm or a destructive windstorm, with the might of a driving torrential rainstorm, he will knock that crown to the ground with his hand. The splendid crown of Ephraim's drunkards will be trampled underfoot. The withering flower, its beautiful splendor, situated at the head of a rich valley, will be like an early fig before harvest. As soon as someone notices it, he grabs it and swallows it. At that time, the Lord who commands armies will become a beautiful crown and a splendid diadem for the remnant of his people. He will give discernment to the one who makes judicial decisions and strength to those who defend the city from attackers. Even these men stagger because of wine. They stumble around because of beer. Priests and prophets stagger because of beer. They are confused because of wine. They stumble around because of beer. They stagger while seeing prophetic visions. They totter while making legal decisions. Indeed, all the tables are covered with vomit. No place is untouched. Who is the Lord trying to teach? To whom is he explaining a message? Those just weaned from milk? Those just taken from their mother's breast? Indeed, they will hear meaningless gibberish, senseless babbling, a syllable here, a syllable there. For with mocking lips and a foreign tongue, he will speak to these people. In the past, he said to them, This is where security can be found. Provide security for the one who is exhausted. This is where rest can be found. But they refuse to listen. So the Lord's word to them will sound like meaningless gibberish, senseless babbling, a syllable here and a syllable there. As a result, they will fall on their backsides when they try to walk and be injured, ensnared, and captured. Therefore, listen to the Lord's word, you who mock, you rulers of these people who reside in Jerusalem. For you say, we have made a treaty with death, with Sheol we have made an agreement. When the overwhelming judgment sweeps by, it will not reach us, for we have made a lie our refuge. We have hidden ourselves in a deceitful word. Therefore, this is what the sovereign master, the Lord, says. Look, I am laying a stone in Zion, 
and a proof stone set in place as a precious cornerstone for the foundation. The one who maintains his faith will not panic. I will make justice the measuring line, fairness the plumb line. Hail will sweep away the unreliable refuge, the floodwaters will overwhelm the hiding place. Your treaty with death will be dissolved. Your agreement with Sheol will not last. When the overwhelming judgment sweeps by, you will be overrun by it. Whenever it sweeps by, it will overtake you. Indeed, every morning it will sweep by. It will come through during the day and the night. When this announcement is understood, it will cause nothing but terror. For the bed is too short to stretch out on and the blanket is too narrow to wrap around oneself. For the Lord will rise up as he did at Mount Perizim. He will rouse himself as he did in the Valley of Gibeon to accomplish his work, his peculiar work, to perform his task, his strange task. So now do not mock or your chains will become heavier. For I have heard a message about decreed destruction from the sovereign master, the Lord who commands armies against the entire land. Pay attention and listen to my message. Be attentive and listen to what I have to say. Does a farmer just keep on plowing at planting time? Does he keep breaking up and harrowing his ground? Once he has leveled its surface, does he not scatter the seed of the caraway plant, sow the seed of the cumin plant, and plant the wheat, barley, and grain in their designated places? His God instructs him. He teaches him the principles of agriculture. Certainly, caraway seed is not threshold with a sledge, nor is the wheel of a cart rolled over a cumin seed. Certainly, caraway seed is beaten with a stick and cumin seed with a flail. Grain is crushed, though one certainly does not thresh it forever. The wheel one's wagon rolls over it, but his horses do not crush it. This also comes from the Lord who commands armies, who gives supernatural guidance and imparts great wisdom. God, the stories about the threshing floor are actually some of my favorite stories. Um, I've studied Ruth for hours and hours and hours on end. And a lot of that talks about threshing and um, all the agricultural work that was going on at that time. And a lot of the analogies in the Bible have to do with agriculture and the threshing floor. But more in the, the good stuff will stay and the fluff will fly away kind of analogies and, and we've all heard those but I guess I never and I don't know if you intended it for, <laughs> for it to be this way maybe it's just my odd way of thinking but I never thought of it this way when it's talking about um, the wheel carts rolling over the cumin seeds and the grain is getting crushed and the wagon wheels roll over it um, and I think about that next line where it says Though one certainly does not thresh it forever. And sometimes, God, I feel like that caraway seed on the threshing floor. That the pressures of everything in life just weigh down on me. And it feels like as soon as I seem to tackle one of them, you know, three more show up. And it just feels like I'm getting crushed. Literally crushed on the threshing floor. And then here you come in and say, but... That, that threshing part, that squishing <laughs> that you're feeling, Chanel, it won't last forever. Trust me, I am teaching you things. I, the Lord who commands armies, can give supernatural guidance and impart great wisdom. So, God, the next time I am on the threshing floor, and today would be one of those days, and I feel like I'm just getting crushed that I just can't even for a moment catch my breath because one more situation, one more thing is coming upon and I'm just getting rolled over and rolled over and rolled over. Remind me that threshing season doesn't last forever. That in the end, you who command armies will provide me with guidance and wisdom of what to do with pretty much everything that's been squished out of me. <laughs> And all the things that are remaining, what are those things that you want me to use for you, that you want me to use for your kingdom? You have promised us that all we have to do is take off the yoke we have on and give it to you and you will take care of our burdens. You will shoulder them for us. And, and God, I need to remember that when I'm getting 
flattened on the threshing floor that although sometimes it's really important for me to be flattened and beaten with a stick and rolled over with um, with a cart to learn my lesson that there's other times too that I take on a lot of that myself where you're like no I I get to be in control Janelle I am ruling this world and I can certainly take care of the situations you're dealing with let me you know sometimes I forget that we are in a relationship God that just like any healthy relationship, I would want to help the other person. It's not a one-sided relationship. You truly want to help me. You want to help guide me. You want to strengthen me. You want to take away my worries and cares, and you want to shoulder those for me. So God, today we do ask for that supernatural guidance and that great wisdom that you have promised us that we may be lying flat on the threshing floor today. But we know that with your promise of strength, we can definitely not only see our way off of the threshing floor, but we can learn a good lesson of turning over those troubles and cares and those things that are pressing down on us over to you to deal with, to handle, to worry about, to be concerned about. You who is the commander of armies and my sovereign God can definitely take care of my little problems in this earth. God, thank you for such an amazing and powerful lesson and showing me things that I just didn't see in the Bible before, putting them in ways that make sense to dealing with my day in and day out life. In your son's name I pray. Amen.